Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to Marvel's WandaVision. Episode 3 has now been released as of today, Friday. Um, and I want to point out, I, I think, by the time this reaction is up, episode 2's reaction should be up. It took me longer to try and get that out because, for whatever reason, my PC just doesn't want to render it at all. And I've had to edit, uh, I've had to like restart like a new, new project, a new edit of it like two, three times now, it's just, you know, getting tedious at this point, but, um, assuming I can, I think, assuming I can render it out somehow by some kind of technological miracle, then it should be out before episode 3 reaction comes out, if not, then, I don't know, I might have to skip it and just go straight into episode 3, but we'll see, but yeah, I mean, as of now, as of recording this episode, this reaction hasn't actually been rendered out yet. So if I can, if I, if I, can, if I can actually get it rendered out, then I'll, I'll definitely be putting that up before episode three goes up. But yeah, it all depends. It all depends. But for whatever reason, my PC just doesn't want to cooperate with me. The, in, in its last few months of life, it just doesn't want to cooperate with me. So yeah, probably because it's in its last few months of life, but yeah, a anyway, we'll, we'll see, but um, moving on to episode 3, so yeah, episode 2 was very, very fun, we um, kind of stuck within the black and white era of sitcom, um, kind of pa uh, parodying, for, for, for the majority of it, we, 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 we stuck in that kind of time period for the majority of it, and we, we, we met a lot of other new characters, we met uh, Geraldine, who we know is played by Tiona Paris, who plays Monica Rambo. so... Monica, we know she is a real person. She, she, she she's a real person outside of Wanda's whole reality warping kind of story. So she is, um, I think she must be one of them, like one 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 of the few members of the of the town maybe who's basically just kind of been dragged into this by by Wanda. Maybe maybe, maybe Wanda's like bringing in real people and creating other fake people to kind of balance out the scales or something like that. But we know she's real. We we don't know about the nosy neighbor. The nosy neighbor might be real, might be fake. We we haven't really seen her before in anything else. So this is you know Catherine Hahn's first appearance in like a Marvel thing. So could be either one of them. Um, one character that struck that, that that kind of stuck out to me was Dotty. Dotty, like her name was mentioned. Her last name wasn't, but you know as, as soon as they mentioned Dotty, I was my mind immediately went back to Dotty Underwood from Agent Carter. Um, and like I said then, I haven't progressed far enough into Agent Carter to know exactly who Dotty is and what her background is, um, so I can't, you know, determine whether or not this could be that same Dotty or whether it could be, you know, in, in, in relation to the Dotty Underwood from back then, because they, 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 did, re they, they did recast the actor, they recast the actor into someone who looked considerably older to maybe match the present day time period a bit more. Um, because I mean, despite it being a warped reality that parodies older television stuff, it is still kind of, you know, like, the, the reality bubble still kind of is created in the present day, like, post-Endgame, so, you know, like, they, 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 they would have to recast to kind of keep up with the times in some sense, so that makes sense. Um, so yeah, Dottie, we don't know, I mean, she, she was suspicious, though, she, she, she was the only m member of that town that was suspicious, like, she, she actually told Wanda, like, you know, I've heard story, I, I've heard things about you and your husband, and Wanda told her, you know, I assure you, like, we don't mean anyone any harm, we're not, we're not trying to hurt anyone, we're just, we're just trying to fit in and live our best kind of suburban life and everything, and she insisted that she didn't believe them, and then the radio started talking, the radio, like, like a guy tried to communicate with them through the radio, and the one line that stuck out was, who's doing this to you, Wanda, like a guy actually trying to reach out to Wanda specifically, so that was weird, and then she found... She found a bunch of different things. I think in the, in the beginning it was eerie because she found like um it was like because it was like an, an older sitcom. The world was black and white, and she like they saw things in black and white too. Like it was um like she found a red and gold toy helicopter in her rose bush with the sword symbol. Sword might play a role in this. Um, the the the, the logo has popped up on both the helicopter and the beekeeper crawled out of the ground. And he had the sword logo on his back too. So that one, I think the beekeeper one was a lot more kind of significant because I think that was a disturbance in the neighborhood that Wanda and Vision noticed. But then as soon as she saw what was happening, as soon as she kind of felt threatened by this random beekeeper kind of just crawling his way out of a manhole cover, she just said no and rewinded the whole thing. So I think that shows that she has control over the thing, that she has some sense of control over what happens and, and what she sees. She, if she sees something that interferes with her the view of reality and, and, and life and everything like that, then, then she just rewinds it, pretends it never happened, and 
goes back to normal. So then by the end of it, after she re rewinded, she had, they actually travelled forward in time. She actually started bringing some colour into the world and, you know, kind of parodying future sitcoms. I think, I think one of them I know um, they parody is Fuller House. Or I think, is it Full House? I don't know. I think that there, there, there was a reboot. There was a there was like a reboot slash sequel that they did a couple of years ago. I think that was called Fuller House. I think I think I think I think the original one is probably called Full House. Um, but yeah, um, but also because Full House was actually where I think, to my knowledge, where Elizabeth Olsen's sisters Mary Kay and Ashley actually rose to childhood stardom. And I think um, Elizabeth herself has said that she would actually go like behind the scenes and like you know just just hang out behind the scenes on set. Um, hanging out with the other co-stars and hanging out with the sisters and stuff. So I think it makes sense in that, like, it, 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 in that sense, why, why they would try and parody Full House. And Full House is one of the bigger kind of American sitcoms out there too. Um, so I think yeah, now, now, now we're actually moving forward in time, moving into the world of color. Um, which actually we 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 should probably start seeing more like uh, recognizable names too. I think I I'm still kind of on the lookout, seeing like seeing just how far into the future they go before they actually, because I think at, at some point they're going to have to stop parodying sitcoms and address the whole dramatic sci-fi and Marvel side of things, because it is still, it, this is still a Marvel, this is still a Marvel product, they can't really hang around with sitcoms and parodies forever, like at some point they have to address the fact that, you know, someone out there could be manipulating Wanda, there's cosmic forces at play, all that kind of stuff, um, so I wonder just how many, how many things they're going to parody or how many things they're going to kind of do in, in that style before they actually move back into Marvel territory that Marvel fans recognize stuff. But the sitcom stuff has been going really, really great. It's been really, really fun to watch and to see them, to see, to see Marvel as well, like kind of parodying them and to kind of show off Wanda trying to make her ideal kind of daily life after the stuff that she herself might have seen as a kid um, is a really, really interesting spin on things too. So yeah, because I think if, 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 you, if you told someone 10 years ago that, that, that Marvel would be doing a one division story styled up a sitcom, so no one will believe you, but it shows to go how far they've come and how creative Marvel can really be when they have the right people working with them and when, when, when they have the right kind of source material too. So it's been fun, it's been very, very fun. So I can't wait to see where we progress from here. Um, so we had them, so we had Geraldine, Jockey, and Sword. And Sword, yeah, I think Sword might be, um, because cause Shield is no longer a thing in in the movies at least. I think Sword might be the next might be the next Shield that they work with, especially with Fury being out there as well. Like he he's probably helping to build Shield. So I think I've looked it up ever so slightly, and apparently it, it is like a like a, like Shield but in space. Shield set in space. So like, so like you know, Shield started off on Earth dealing with intergalactic threats that would come to Earth and other things, and now they've actually moved to the stars and they're tackling those threats right on that front line so that will be interesting that will be interesting to see so sword i don't know i don't, I don't know what it, i can't remember what it stands for but it, it, it is it is it is cool sword and it does kind of originate in space so that is cool so i don't know if we're going to see any other characters connected to sword in this series or how they're going to introduce sword like because i think right now it just seems like sword hasn't really been shown to us in this they haven't really explained who sword is but we we, we know the sword is it, it they are monitoring on the outside. They have like a, like an old-fashioned TV and some other kind of you know tech decks and set pieces and stuff that show them monitoring it. And they have like did they have like to communicate? Did they have attempted to actually communicate by sending in like a helicopter, like an inanimate object, and then you know trying to contact her through the radio, and then finally sending someone in, like an actual person, into her world um, to her. Like to who? Like the, the, to her just seems ominous, and she kind of erases it from her memory. And move sword from it. So, yeah. So they have tried to establish communication. I mean, in some, in in a sense that they, they they have already established it, but now they have to figure out how to actually get through to her and show that they're there to help and stuff. And I think we need to sit. And I think it won't be until she's. I think. I mean, I would say it w it wouldn't be until she sees Darcy or Jimmy Woo, but then she doesn't even really know who either of those people are. So I don't, I, 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 I don't know if they're going to show her anyone that she knows and trusts. If they're actually going to show us anyone that she's familiar with, because I think that would be the way. Like show her. I don't know. I mean, because all the other Avengers are gone now. Cap's an old guy. She might might recognize him. Bucky and Bucky and um, Falcon. I don't know. I, I think because timeline wise, I don't know if the, if if all these Marvel Disney Plus shows would be taking place at around the same time, or if, if Bucky and Falcon are like still you know preoccupied with their own show that's going to be released in May. I, I, I don't know. So. Yeah, I don't know. We have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. But that is all of that stuff. And Easter eggs. We have had some great Easter eggs. It's actually been pointed out to me. Um, the Strucker one, I recognized almost immediately. I think um, 
it's actually been pointed out to me that the the the, the Stark Industries toaster is actually an Easter egg, like like a reference to the bomb that killed uh, Wanda and, and Pietro's parents back before Age of Ultron, and then the one that almost killed them too. So at the end, you actually hear it tick tick ticking up to a presumed explosion, but then the toast comes out. There's actually a reference to the Stark Industries missile that first killed their parents, but then the other one that like just sat in the bricks waiting to go off and to threaten to kill them at any kind of moment in time. But then the Strucker watch, I noticed that I think, I think, I think it's actually you know, like a, it's meant to be a timeline of the stuff that's happened to Wanda. So first it's the Stark Industries thing that tore her family apart, then the Strucker watch, her and Pietro were recruited into Hydra for the um for the um experimentation thing with the with, 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 with the scepter and everything. So I don't know what the next one might be. Maybe Ultron, or like I don't, I don't know if it would be Ultron because I think Arthur Strucker, I think yeah, or maybe like the Avengers, or I don't know. Yeah, because first it was just the, the the Stark Industries missile, then it was the um, then it was the yeah the um the the the, the Strucker Hydra thing, like them being put into Hydra. But then and then after that, um, I don't know. I don't know what might see. Maybe maybe maybe, 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 maybe maybe the Mind Stone. Maybe actually some experimentation going on. Like maybe you know people becoming superheroes and people getting superpowers, or maybe like like a costume commercial or something, like, you know, Wanda and Pietro actually getting their powers and stuff, and I don't know, but it's it's really cool referencing either way, it's really, really cool Easter egg referencing, and also just like a great way to execute it, showing it off as an actual commercial within this world and everything, so, like, you know, like, like a cool way to show how Wanda is actively rejecting her history because of how much pain it brings her, but then also showing how, like, the way she chooses to remember it through watching the people who are actually having these commercials be executed and stuff like that so yeah uh but yeah that is it that is pretty much it i've been talking for a while now and episode three is waiting to be played so yeah on to um marvel's one division episode three of season one uh this is going to be the highlight reel um as per usual so if you guys want to see the full length of reaction for this episode watch the entire episode along with me you can do that over on patreon the full length reaction will be over there but it won't have any of the actual episode footage you have to get that from Disney Plus and sync it up and it'll be good to go. So that will be also be super fun. That will also be super fun. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, episode three. Let's go. One division. <laughs> Is this Full House? Are they parodying Full House? I've never watched Full House. So I don't know what the intro is actually like, but this is good. This is cool. This is cool. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he's got like actual class of hair and everything. Yeah, this is very like. This is very 70s, 80s, 90s, yeah. It's very 80s, I'd say. Very 80s. Monica! Okie dokie, one division in color. In color. Yep. Definitely pregnant. Oh. Well, that much we There was hear. doubt. It's just kind of taking the spice of. At four months, the fetus is about as big as a pear. At five months, a papaya, six grapefruit, seven pineapple. What size fruit would it be at, say, 12 hours? <laughs> uh, pardon? 12 hours? <laughs> well, I think this line like of a grape? is fruitless. A grape? Or like <laughs> a pomegranate well, seed? Technically speaking, should we be concerned? <laughs> I think you might have taken the head strumming a little too far there, old chum. So I have. Thanks, buddy. And he's just... Yeah, still cutting through the wall. Yeah. I can't wait to be a proud papaya. <laughs> Vision would get along really well with Liam Duke. Vision would get along so well with Liam Duke. They are just pioneers of puns. Yeah. Overwhelming urge to clean or I think we have an understanding. <laughs> Start the clock. Oh, he's trying to do nappies. Your personal best. Yes. Yeah. We are nothing if not prepared. Oh! Whoa. <coughs> what the dick is? Let's abandon the kitchen. They abandon the kitchen? That's where all the food is. Whoa. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Two fine hydra. I read it on the newspaper. Two fine hydra something. Oh, Two fine hydra. This is a fake contraction. This room, this is hard. Dinner. Outside with her, I think something's wrong here, Wanda. Yes, I know what you mean. 
the truth is, we are. Oh, I thought Disney Disney bus just fetched and just rewinded yeah. randomly. Oh, Wanda's changing, like changing it. Wanda's changing it. Oh, he even he has to race to slow himself. Uh. It's raining inside yes. the house. Yes, dear. I think my water just broke. Oh my. Yes, dear. Escape to a world all your own. Is this Tahiti? Problems float away. Is this Tahiti? When you want to get away, but you don't want to go anywhere. Hydra soak. Hydra goddess within. A, ba a, a bath bomb well, thing, really? Hydra soak. Monica! Are you alright in there? Yes, I am just looking! Okay. Oh, oh, she can change her coats at will. Ooh, that's a nice one. A nice no. fur one. I mean, no, thank you! Oh, look at me going on and What on the hell? Is that a swan? Is that a swan? Is that a swan? Or a goose? Or a swan goose. Marshmallow moon man. Nothing. Nothing. No, nope. he's he's insistent. He's insistent. It's insistent. So I'm trying every trick. No, nope, it's insistent. He wants to stay. He wants to stay. And wouldn't you know it in that moment. Is it back or the swan's back? It's back. Oh yes. Oh yes. The feet floating in the air next to me. And I look back at Whoa. And I say, gravity oh. Whoa, what's it doing? How does she not notice that thing right next to her? And that's exactly what Mr. Haddock said. Oh, oh, is it's hidden. It it's oh, in. Oh, it's a stork, yes, I can explain. That's, oh, it's a stork, not a swan. Like, it's a stork, okay. Oh, yeah, that makes even more sense. The baby's coming. You're pregnant? Whoa. Oh, ho, ho, ho. This is one destructive pregnancy. I love how Monica's just taking the reins at this point. Just no questioning, just going ahead and helping. Yeah. It's time to start pushing. You ready? You ready? Is it gonna be human or synthesoid? Or humanoid? Baby. Oh, it's human. It's a boy. It's a Billy or a Tommy. Yeah. He's a papaya. Hey, <laughs> why don't you? Oh, there's you some blue eyes, yeah. Some Steve Rogers blue eyes. Uh. Ah! Ah! Twins? Is it twins? Is it twins? A Billy and a Tommy? Billy and a Tommy? A Billy and a Tommy. Is Geraldine inside with Wanda? Yes, why? You're such a strong lady. Oh. Can you believe it? I'm a twin. You are a twin. I had a brother. Yeah, you did. His name was Pietro. Pietro Maximo. She remembers. Drag your old stone. Now she's gonna voice a phobian lullaby. He was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? Oh, damn. Oh, oh lord. Okay. She's new to town. Brand new. There's no family. Geraldine, yeah, no, she's Monica. Husband. What did you say? So she knows who Wanda is. Just now. She knows she's an ex Avenger. She knows that her brother was Pietro. I said. Hey, I'll take a shift rocking the babies. No, I think you should leave. Oh, why would uh, you be like that? Oh, no. What do you mean? She sword! She has a sword necklace. She came here because. She came here because we're all. She came here because we're all what? What Fake. are you trying to tell me? What is that? What? Fake. That. She's. She's. She's working with sword. I... Wanda. 
Oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> Fill the beans, Herb. Catch you on the flip side. Why is Daryl Dean? Well, she left, honey. She had to rush home. She rushed home? What do you mean she had to rush home? Oh, the aspect's changing. The aspect ratio is changing. Oh. Oh, damn. Oh, she was kicked out by Wanda. And sword is here. Sword is here. Oh, damn. Oh, there's a little bubble. Yeah, there's a little TV bubble. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, that was that was a great episode. That was a very very fun episode. So Yeah, uh, Wanda gave birth. Wanda had two twins. Um and yeah, I think e e I think even in the comics she she actually did not only create a life for her and vision through magic, but she 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 also had kids through magic. She actually used her powers to actually, you know, make herself pregnant and then give birth to two twins. And I think it, it, I think in the comics her twins actually did have her powers too. Like her twins were Actually, you know, like enhanced individuals. I don't know if it was two boys or a boy and a girl or or what what or, or what it was. But I know she she did have twins in the comics and that that they were powerful twins. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's not uncommon like for for a superhero to you know like have kids biologically and then to, for those kids to end up you know having some you know gifts passed on by their parents too. So that's interesting. I don't know if they're gonna go down that path with this. If Billy and Tommy, as they're named in this, are gonna have um. I, I expect I fully expected one kid to be a human and one kid to just be a mini vision with like you know mind stone and everything like that like I, I fully expected like fully expected what, what, what one kid to be like a like a human a humanoid and then the, the other one to actually be made of vibranium the way the vision is but no we actually had two fully human boys and I think for I think for Wanda she 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 would want like two normal boys too so like she she like cause she she Wanda being not normal she knows the price you pay in a world that reveres and rejects anything that's not normal so she so she, 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 she would want the best life for her kids and would not put them through anything that would you know force them into harm's way so yeah and i think in that sense this did did, 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 did this episode was very fun i think it, it probably was <coughs> uh mim mimicking full house a little bit I, I think again personally i haven't actually seen um but yeah, I think it might have been uh, mimicking Full House, especially with the intro. The intro, I think I've seen. I think I, I've like. I think it was a while ago. I, I actually watched like a compilation of like older kind of sitcom and TV show intros and stuff. It's just to just, just watch the evolution. It's it's, it's it's when I'm when when I'm bored. It's one of the things I look up. Just you know, compilations of like you know evolutions of different intros, like the Warner Brothers intro, the Universal intro, stuff like that, and then older sitcom and TV show intros. And stuff. It, it it's fun to see how it's you know changed over time. But I think I think that did kind of remind me of Full House. I guess I haven't really again Full House is not something I grew up with. It's not something I watched at all. So I can't tell. Um, but yeah. But I mean, hey, if, if this if they ever do like an episode of this with friends with like a surprise cameo from other superheroes and other Avengers, then I will be all over that. I'll be all over that. <sighs> okay, so I'm back. Hopefully the ticking from my PC should be gone now. I had to take some extra desperate measures to try and, you know, take it away to, to get rid of it. So hopefully it should be gone now. Um, but yeah, back to WandaVision. Back to WandaVision. So where was I? Where was I? Twins. Yeah, twins and power. So yeah, she uh, she has twins in the thing. I think, I don't know if her twin story is connected to House of M. Because I think House of M is similar to what this is. Like she creates a whole new reality and stuff, but I think, I don't know if that, if even in the comics that is because Vision's dead or because she just wants like a whole new life or what it is, but all I know is House of M, she creates a world with no more mutants, it's just her, potentially also Vision and her two kids and whatever, or, or, or maybe it's like the same characters, but maybe it's like, you know, depowered, like, 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 the, 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 the same people, like the X-Men and the and, and everything, but they're literally just not mutants anymore, because then I think with the X-Men, like, the biggest problem is how the world rejects mutants, how the world treats them as, you know, unnatural and all that kind of stuff, and then the kind of rejection and abuse they face because of that, so she, so, so she, so she takes away 
what society picks on them for and targets them for, but then keeps the people and takes away their powers. I don't, I don't know. I haven't read House of M. I need to read it. I likely need to read it. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I think... And also, Wanda, she's very, very persistent. Wanda is very, very persistent in actually maintaining this charade, maintaining this kind of facade of, like, a normal suburban life to the point where even when Vision kind of addressed the fact that, you know, oh, the other neighbours that, like... Like, like 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 something feels wrong here. Like like the the, the other neighbors are acting weird sometimes. They sometimes they sometimes question me and question you. They they're acting weird. I think something something's really not very right here. And then the rewind thing happens. I won't lie. I thought my Disney Plus glitch. I thought something was wrong with my PC and or my internet. I thought it literally just like the episode itself just rewinded and I was gonna have syncing issues in editing. I I, I I literally thought they did like the Disney Plus app itself glitch and it rewinded. But no, that was Wanda doing her trick. Like this time she 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 didn't have that rewind effect last time last episode she, like last episode she literally had that rewind effect that showed her and vision walking back into the house and then readdressing thing but this time it just like snapped back to vision talking again and this time he didn't really say any any, any of that stuff he just said you know oh i'm, I'm sure we're gonna be great parents just you know just just just, just carrying on like it was a normal thing so wanda herself is very very persistent in actually maintaining this um facade of a normal life and normal people and everything but the other people aren't really, you know, they are they they don't believe that they're real either, or or at least or at least even if they are real, they, like they don't believe that what they're doing, or, like the life that they're living, is real. Like you know, like Sherb and and Agnes, like they're they're very very suspicious. Like they were suspicious of Geraldine, and yeah, Geraldine. We finally we get some confirmation that it is in fact Monica Ra- M- Monica Rambo. That she, she she for one thing, she's a very recent addition. She's a new new addition. We're, which is fair, we're like we only saw her pop popping up in episode two, so she's a fairly recent addition um, to this kind of to to this reality, and she has no home, no family, no no no, no background that the others can actually ask her about. So, so she, she 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 has no history that the the way the, the, way the rest of them do, and even Herb and and, and, and even Sherb and Geraldine. Sherb and Agnes even were, you know, like they 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 were struggling to say it, but they were like, cause cause we we are because we like like they were struggling to finish the sentence, but you you could tell they were trying to say that you know we're fake or what we're doing here isn't real or this this world that we're living in isn't real, like something's not real here, something's not right here, um, but they just couldn't say it, they just couldn't bring themselves down. I think I think it was soon. I think it was I think I think Geraldine to like Geraldine being the outsider, like because. We, we we already know how Wanda feels about outsiders. Like like the beekeeper in, in in the sword beekeeper outfit was the obvious one. That was the obvious one. Like like a guy crawling out of the manhole cover and, and making Wanda feel nervous. That was the obvious one. But then Geraldine, I think that one was more prolonged because Geraldine is an actual important character of the show, and also because she started off as Geraldine. Like like Monica started off as Geraldine, like like a seemingly innocent addition to this life to this world, and like somehow a friend to Wanda. But then like but then she reveals all of this news and she's even wearing a sword necklace she's wearing a sword necklace so, 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 so she's actually with sword she's actually working with swords i think i think she could have been she could have been like an undercover agent maybe she 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 she, she, she could have been someone that like they sent in undercover or something but i don't know but but she was wearing a sword necklace and and wanda recognizes that symbol and of course um everything else so so I, th- I think I think with Geraldine being the odd one out being the most kind of out of place citizen in 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 that town um I think it's also to do with the fact that, like, the moment Wanda kicks her out off screen, she she kicks her out off screen. The the moment Geraldine's like removed from that that reality, the rest of them kind of seemingly return to normal. Like, you know, like Agnes, you know, rings her bell and rides off on her bike, and Sherb goes to do whatever he's doing. Like, so, so uh, as soon as uh, as soon as the most significant anomaly is removed, the rest of them just go about their normal lives. They return back to their original states of minds um and stuff so yeah and then vision notices like you know like that is weird and then he goes back to question what's happening and then wanda seems normal just watching over baby billy and baby tommy so uh, yeah it's yeah um so i think i think that is a great twist of events and it's also the way that you know like also pietro they mentioned pietro pietro has never has not once been name dropped since age of ultra i don't think i think you know um i don't think i think civil war maybe I don't know. No, I think I, I, I think I think he's not been mentioned once. He's not been mentioned once. It's always like like since his death, like we we we, we we've watched as as Wanda has been forced to fend for herself. Even even with the Avengers, she's been forced to fend for herself. And now 
hearing pe- I mean Wanda brought up Pietro Wanda, Wanda brought up because then he had like um because uh because um Geraldine mentioned that you know like that Billy and Tommy were twins and then Wanda said oh I was a twin I was a twin. I, I I I had a twin you know she 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 had she had a twin brother Pietro um and then she lost him and I think I don't I don't know if she mentioned she lost him but then Geraldine finished off the sentence saying you know oh Pietro was killed by Ultron wasn't he like like there's no subtlety in that sentence whatsoever no subtlety in that sentence and. I think I think what what really got me to was um was Wanda sing, singing the Sokovian lullaby because I think I, I couldn't really tell at first but then like you know like she she wasn't speaking English she had like an accent so I was like oh it must be a Sokovian lullaby and also even more emotional it was likely something her her mother sang to her and her brother to put them to sleep so she's actually bringing more of her roots and more of her family into this which which seems kind of obvious but still it was it was heartfelt it was pretty heartfelt but then as soon as as as, as soon as as soon as Geraldine mentions that, you know, Pietro was killed by Ultron, that's when Wanda's like, Pietro was killed by Ultron, and then she, she probably has that internal flashback, the internal memory of having felt herself losing Pietro, because she never saw him die, she, 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 was, she was never there when he was actually shot by Ultron in, in, in the Quinjet, uh, but, 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 but we, we can see, if you go back and watch the movie, you can see her actually feeling that loss of connection to Pietro, and just crumbling and destroying dozens of Ultron bots in the process, um, and stuff so she that is a memory she does not want to revisit but also it's it's that is that is one small memory that is a larger part that that is part of a larger past that she does not want to visit she like she she, she doesn't want to revisit ultron the avengers hydra any of that stuff she wants to move on you know believing that she can live a normal life believing that she can just be like a normal not a normal woman with, with a normal husband with all these powers and significances and everything so the moment that someone mentions that memory to her, she she has to question what, like how and why Geraldine knows this, and then of course she spots the necklace with the sword symbol that she's seen in dozens of other places, in, in a, a couple of other places, and then she she immediately recognizes Geraldine isn't meant to be here. She like she's not meant to be here, and I, I think even that line at the end, like oh Geraldine had to rush home, like you know, like, it, 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 it's how like you know like it, it, it's like a like, kind of like kind of like a double sided kind of like a phrase oh she had to rush home so for one thing she kicked her out of the village like because she she has no home in the village she, she she has no home in the town um like agnes said but also she kicked her out like oh you you you, you think you can just sneak into my in, in, into my reality and get away with it no you can go back to your earth back to your sword and back to the back back back, back to the real world and you know stay there so yeah, that was that 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 was some intense stuff. Like like as the episodes go by, they are understandably kicking up the uh, the kind of atmosphere, like the 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 sincerity of all this kind of cross universe meddling and um the kind of gravity of just how powerful Wanda really is, and also just 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 going even further just to going even further to show just how much she actually controls, um and showing what what, what what she lets into her universe and what she kicks out of her universe too. So it's some pretty powerful stuff. It's some pretty powerful stuff. So I am looking forward to seeing these coming episodes should be good now then. These coming episodes, I think I think now, I think at the very end we got like a little sneak, a sneak peek. So I think in, 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 even in the trailer we did see that there's like a whole government base set up outside of, I think, I think, I think the town is called Westview. I think even, even in, um, in the place where like where where Monica land where Monica landed landed, we actually saw like a like a town board saying welcome to West to Westview, and I think that is where Wanda has set up camp with her own reality. And when we see that there's like a, like a like a fence fencing around, and there's like that whole kind of that 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 kind of like coloured static you get with with um, with TVs, like like a whole bubble kind of surrounding it. So it, it it is literally a bubble, a bubble reality surrounding like an already existing town. So. Yeah, I was right. So it it is actually still based on it. It it is still kind of taking place on Earth, and Wanda has actually used her power to take over like an entire town and, you know, create some people. So I think Agnes and Sherb are they fake or are they real? Because I think because I'm still thinking like it like like because like Monica when when she got in, Monica did not maintain her own sense of identity. She she picked up a whole new name. Or I think or did she, or did she? I don't know. Because. Because then I'm wondering if maybe she didn't lose her identity. Maybe either she did or she was literally sent undercover. So she was given like a new name and she was given... Because I think the others might be brainwashed. The others might be brainwashed. Like like Agnes and Sherb and Dottie might be brainwashed. Um, we don't know if they're... I think 
There's a thing, I don't, I don't know if they actually have to be real, if they have to be fake people, or if they might just be given fake identities, fake memories, fake lives and everything, like, that's clearly what's going on. And then Geraldine, uh, and then M Monica, as soon as she's sent in to try and establish, connect to, to, to try and establish communication, she's maybe given, like, a fake life and a fake name, because I think that would also make sense why, because, like, at first when Wanda asked her her name, she hesitated for a little bit and then said, oh, Geraldine, like, she, she actually didn't know what her name was and then Wanda's kind of magic assigns her like a new name and a new identity but then she she doesn't have like a life like she she's not like Wanda's thing Wanda's magic maybe senses a new person but then with Geraldine she, she, she she's not hostile she's just like an like an like, like another woman in the group she's just like she's just another woman in the group she's just another member of the uh, uh, of the town so she's not overly hostile she's not obviously hostile so she's so her magic just gives her like a new identity a new name and a, a new life and everything but but not to the extent where she actually has, like, a background of her own, like, a family and a home and everything. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know to what extent this might all be fake. Like, how much of it is fake to that <sighs> such lengths, I think. Because I don't know if, if Wanda, w if Wanda w would have actually gone to the lengths of actually making, like, actually creating fake people, like, even physically... Um, like if Agnes and Sherb will just turn to dust as soon as this whole sh charade just, as, as soon as this whole thing just, just, just crumbles away and stops being real, or if something else is going to happen, like if, if, if Vision turns to dust, because I think Vision has to be fake, Vision definitely has to be fake, because I mean, we don't know what they did with the body, we do not know what they did with Vision, because I think Vision's body itself didn't turn to dust, but like Vision, his head was crushed in, the mind was taken out, and then he turned all black and white. But Vision's body after after Infinity War, we, we we do not know where Vision's body went. I think I did read that that Endgame was meant to have a post credit. W w w w w w actually, one of the post credit scenes or one of the post credit ideas for Endgame was to have Wanda opening up a body bag and it shows Vision inside. So they didn't go with that in the end, which I think is a smart decision because I think that wouldn't really have been like a very very kind of fun post credit to work with and also Endgame didn't, didn't really need it, it was it was like a three hour movie it really didn't need like a post credit to go along with it so it was smart but in, it, but but what, 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 what one of the ideas they brainstormed was Wanda seeing Vision in a body bag so I think we don't know what we, we don't know what they did to Vision's body in after Infinity War so for all we know she like what, what Wanda could have actually you know sought out Vision's body and, and, and stole it from the Avengers morgue or something um and then reanimated it to look real. So I think maybe if everything crumbles away, Vision's body is the one thing that then turns black and white, and it shows like a still gaping hole in his in his forehead, and just he just you know flops to the floor like a fish with a cape and all. Um, I don't know, but yeah, I don't know. I guess we we'll have to wait and see. But I think now we are veering more into what's going on outside. So I think now in the coming episodes we should see maybe Jimmy Woo, maybe Darcy, maybe now, I think now will be an interesting time to, to, to get a look at what's actually going on. Yeah, so, so I think I think in the next episode could be half of Wanda trying to maintain this false sense of safety and peace inside her own reality, and then on the outside we see exactly what S.W.O.R.D. and Jimmy and everyone else is doing to try and get in and fix things. Because I think... Because we haven't seen the damage it's doing. I think I think right now, like we've seen the damage it's doing in terms of actually giving people fake identities and giving them confusion and you know, like m like m like memory issues and all, all, all that kind of stuff. But we haven't seen if Wanda's reality is actually physically damaging the material reality of the Earth that the 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 that that we know. So we don't know if um she's actually opening up other portals or or, or if like other people. Are still attacking Earth in her absence, or, or what's happening? So I think we, I think, I think to 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 to, to truly understand the, the the damage it's causing, we 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 actually have to spend some time outside, see like, see what's actually happening to Earth and what's actually happening to the other characters. So yeah, it should be fun. It should be fun. And yeah, the Easter egg commercial we had was to do with a Hydra bath bomb. So I think at first I thought it was going to be Tahiti. At first I thought it was going to be Tahiti, but then Wanda doesn't know about Tahiti. I think. You know, me me seeing like you know like someone in like a bathtub being pampered and like a nice kind of sunny you know sunshiny background and background and everything. I I thought Tahiti. I thought Tahiti, but no, that is exclusively a Shield thing. You know, what, like what, what Wonder wouldn't know about it. But then it turns out it's actually like a Hydra kind of bath tub, like a like a bath bomb thing, like like a, a, a bath soak, which I think maybe would be maybe maybe that would be you know how Wanda how how Wanda and Pietro were treated. So like they 
they were the sole survivors of the experiments that that Strucker and List actually conducted at like at their Hydra base. So maybe that maybe because of that they were pampered. Maybe because of that because of that they were treated well. Like they, 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 they were the sole survivors, so they were valued and treasured even more. So could be a reference to that. Maybe you know like they 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 volunteered themselves for these experiments to to protect their country. So because of that they they because of that they were treated even better. So could be to do with that. So. Yeah, I think I think because of because I now know what these Easter eggs actually mean because because they're actually references to Wanda's history and to her past. I'm actually all the more curious to know what like what kind of territory that that they might go into, like how they might reference the Avengers or Ultron or anything else. I think yeah, because I think Wanda's had a very very extensive history. Wanda's had a very very powerful and extensive history. So how how much how much of it they reference and how they reference it is actually interesting to actually go into. So this one was cool. This one was cool. So yeah, I don't know what what Monica's future might be now. I think I think I think I'm I, I'm anticipating that I'm anticipating that she does retain her memories of having been in Wanda's reality, so that then she can actually feed Jimmy and, and Darcy some intel on what's happening on the inside, what it's like, and how and how Wanda is. Because I think the question they had is Wanda, who's doing this to you? So their theory is that someone else is, you know, doing this to Wanda, forcing her to do this. Um, which I think. Which, which honestly, I think is actually a fairly positive kind of outlook. Cause I think it's definitely a change from from the world seeing Wanda as a villain after after Civil War, cause because because of how she lost control of her powers in Civil War and caused that explosion, and and how she was locked up by but uh, locked up in the raft too. It, it's definitely a change. Like like it, it's it's definitely a change from like oh Wanda must be doing this because she's powerful and she's a villain and she loves to destroy things and manipulate people. So it, it's definitely a nice change of pace from that. So I think. So I think it's like a mixture of that, but also like a like a like a kind of like a nice lead into like oh there are other cosmic beings out there with similar powers. Maybe they have evil intentions and and, and they've locked onto her and they're manipulating her, which I think is not implausible. I think now like the more I think about it, the more I think maybe maybe she, she's doing this, but then other beings are sensing her power, sensing her reality warping power, and they're feeding off of her emotions and using that to do whatever they might be doing. Um, because again, one division is meant to lead into Doctor Strange too, so that is going to take time to time to introduce more villains. And I think apparently there's been a couple of mentions, of, a, a, a couple of references of the devil in this. I think apparently in in in, in the first two episodes, I I haven't. I think in the second episode, I remember because I think um Agnes said, you know, oh like um like 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 someone mentioned so someone mentioned that you know like the devils and the details or something, and then Agnes was like Agnes whispered in Wanda's ear, oh that's not the only place he is. So apparently that's meant to be like a larger reference to something. And I think the only devil I can think of in the Marvel universe is Mephisto. He is like a big big baddie. He's he's quite literally physically a bit like a, like a big baddie, but he is like he's basically the kind of satan of the marvel universe and he's a very very big evil person um he's connected to ghost rider he's going to go through so i think if they if they if they bring in ghost rider now i think i think, I think bring in mephisto because then ghost rider has fought mephisto i think to, to my knowledge he's fought mephisto on multiple, multiple occasions so if, if they bring in if they bring in Mephi if they bring in mephisto then they that that would also give them reason to bring in someone who's able to combat him, or at least able to help other heroes combat him. And that that hero that hero would be Ghost Rider. So this could be the way we get Ghost Rider. I don't know, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's like seeing and hearing different kind of you know really really kind of on 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 the nose, tongue in cheek references in Agents of Shield for Ghost Rider. I've kind of just been angsty, and I was like, I want to see Ghost Rider. I want to see them. I want to see how M how the MCU would pull off Ghost Rider. I want to see how they would actually pull off Ghost Rider, what we're like, whether it's like, I mean, Nick Cage, I don't know if he would come back for it, but, I don't know, maybe, maybe they'd have to recast Johnny Blaze or something, but, um, but yeah, I think if, if they're bringing in Mephisto, I think that would be a really, really cool thing to do, I think, I think, I, I, I don't know if, if, if Mephisto would be the next Thanos, if that would be the next big villain, because I think, because I think, not too many people are aware of him, like, he is one of the, like, he seems like one, 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 one of the characters that's, like, deeper into the comics, so not many people would be too aware of him, but, like, if you go, like, Galactus, there's already been, you know, mentions of it, like, um, people are already somewhat familiar with him, um, but, you know, like, M M M Mephisto, he is also from, like, another dimension, too, he's, he's, he's from his own, like, like, a, like, a place called, like, a place dubbed as Mephisto's realm, like, a literal hell and fire and brimstone type of hellish dimension that Ghost Rider, again, has been to, um, so I think if he then senses someone from another dimension using reality warping powers, I think maybe that could, like he he could maybe latch onto that and use that somehow. Like I, 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 I don't know if he does like like emotional 
like like if he feeds off of the emotions of other people or what happens, but the like literally the most the 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 the, the, the knowledge that I have on him is based on my time playing the first uh, Ultimate Alliance game. He was a fairly prominent role in that. Um, so that is pretty much all I know about him. Like, the, it, 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 it's all the knowledge I have on him as a character. So I don't, I don't really have a lot to go on. Um, but, but, but Mephisto could be an interesting person to bring in, especially if, 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 if they actually bring in like a bigger villain for like for Wanda to face off against. I think Mephisto could be, could be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, no. So, so they, so again, back to the point. They think someone is doing this to want Someone is actually making Wanda do this to actually create like an alternate reality and to maybe you know create like a fake reality. But yeah, and I think like I said before, it's um, I wouldn't be completely against it. I think. Because I mean, it would make sense for Wanda. Wanda wants a normal life. Wanda wants a normal life. She does. She doesn't want to have to be a superhero. Like she, she, she's seen the cost of being a superhero. What happens when you make mistakes? What happens when you lose people? What happens when they fight each other? And what happens when all the big bads come to you know kill everyone? And like she, like she, she's seen the costs and the hazards of being a superhero. And and it's understandable that she doesn't want that. So I think if, if she wants a normal life, it it makes sense that she. Would, it's the one thing that she would actually actively, extensively use her powers for. Um, so, yeah, and then, and then maybe maybe she draw. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if she would like force other people into the, against their will. But I think she's maybe, you know, I think I don't think she's that evil. But I think she also just wants other people to actually be a part of it in a way that like she can. I don't know, because I think the other people might just be damage she's not intending, which is the the, the definition of collateral damage, but. Yeah, I don't know. I do not know. My mind is just suddenly. It, 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 it's after watching this, it's even so. I think it's even slower. So yeah, my, my 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 mind for some reason is working even slower. I can't really think of any co co coherent thoughts in relation to Wanda and who's doing this to you and anyone who who could be doing this to her besides from Mephisto. So I don't know. I don't know. But I think the whole Devil and Mephisto connection. I'm gonna trust that for now. I'm gonna trust it for now. See if that is actually the route they go down. But but with Wanda, um, I think right now she's mainly scared. Like she, 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 she wants this to be real so bad, and she's willing to take out anyone and anything that might threaten the rea the actual integrity of this reality and everything. So she, she, as shown by her, literally kicking Monica out and stuff. So we'll have to wait and see where that leads. But yeah, I think Wanda. I think deep down, she likely means no one any harm. She likely means no one any harm, but. She is willing to to get rid of anyone who she thinks might be a threat, and Geraldine is. is I, I think I think she I think she 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 she, she definitely saw Geraldine as, as a threat that took it that, that that took a while to reveal itself. And with Geraldine, it was it's really, I think with Monica, I think it was just a slip up. It was a slip up of information. She I think it also shows it shows it it also shows that she knows who Wanda is. She knows Wanda is Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. Like she had a brother, and she's an ex Avenger. She's she's capable of all this stuff. She's you know very very powerful. So I think it was just like a maybe maybe like a like a momentary slip up of information that kind of gave her away, and then she blew her cover. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I do think it's interesting that Sword, being a space agency, has now decided to come down to Earth, and I think it's also a testament. To, it's also a testament to Wanda's power, maybe like like Wanda doing all of this, Wanda garnering this much attention from the government for doing this. They decide, you know, okay, well, Shield, we can't, we can't really call on Shield. Well, we can't, because I think by the time this would happen, Shield is over. The story for Shield has ended, and the agents of Shield were, w w something has happened to them. Whatever's happened, like they've moved on. They're no longer the agents of Shield. Um, so Sword is the only agency left that you know is still still works within the same area, still works within the same field, and they're the only ones left capable of handling something like this, and also because it's also Earth-based, like, you know, Wanda is the one that they actually come to Earth for, so it's like a testament to both of them, Sword can handle it, Wanda is on Earth, and then those two lines collide, so I think that's it's like an interesting thing, but I think in the future I would be interest, interest, interested to see just what kind of space threats Sword would actually take on, and if they if they do like a, like an Agents of Sword TV show or movie or whatever, I think that, that would be interesting to see too, and I think I'm actually gonna look into Sword a little more online and actually see, um, um, what it's all about, who's in it, any any any, any characters that that seem familiar, 
and stuff. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Sword handle how 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 Jimmy. I think I think Jim, I think Jimmy and Darcy especially. I think because like Jimmy doesn't really have much. I think Jimmy is also a character I'm really interested to see like how he reacts to all this because I think Jimmy the most the most far fetched thing he experienced is literally Giant Man. He saw he's seen he's seen Scott. He knows he's Ant Man. He knows that he can shrink, but also he can enlarge too. So even he knows that stuff. And Darcy, she's dealt with Thor as Guardians and that kind of stuff. So I think it's, 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 it's seeing all of them react to like Wanda and Vision and well maybe not Vision because he's dead, but Wanda and her magic and seeing everything um, being unleashed that way, I think that is going to be super interesting to see. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be very, very fun. But I think now also moving forward, I'm interested to see what the other townspeople's reactions are, because now I think they're a lot... Because now, now we know deep down they know something's wrong. They know that either they're not meant to be there or this reality isn't meant to exist or something is wrong, like something doesn't feel right and they know that they're fake or their lives are fake or something. So I think going forward, I think I, I like I, I, I want to see in how many other ways their memory and their patience and their understanding of the lives they live can be tested and exactly how far Wanda goes to prevent that from happening. Because I think Wanda, again, Wanda's shown that she's insistent. You know, like nothing here is bad. Nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. All of you keep living your happy-go, merry lives. Um, so I think it's going to be an interesting clash between them, like realizing something is weird or something is different or something's wrong and then wander going the extra mile to actually wipe their memories of that or what wipe their attention spans of whatever's going wrong and sorting out and everything so yeah um and i think that might be where it, that might be where the damage comes in like the more she tries to mess with their minds and mess with their memories the more they kind of lose control of their identities and lose control of themselves and maybe the maybe that is what leads to everything crashing down like even you know, if the people in the town can no longer control themselves or can no longer you know stay sane then the entire town kind of falls apart and then that kind of breaks the boundaries between realities and maybe that could be what leads to, you know, extra dimensional trouble. So we will see. We will see. But yeah, that is gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. And yeah, I mean I I I I, I really enjoyed the, the smaller tidbits in this episode, the small tidbits like like the stalk. I don't know I, I, I don't know why I couldn't tell it was a stalk. I really could not tell it was because the thing, whenever I see stalks they are usually there's that like because the whole stalks are bringing you a child thing. I'm always like I I I always expect to see a stalk carrying like a little like a little cloth blanket thing with a baby inside. But this stalk wasn't carrying anything. That's exactly why I thought, you know, oh it must be a swan or a goose or a swan goose. Uh, but no, it was a stalk. And then by by the time it actually got to the wall and actually blended it blended into the paint and was holding thing that's when that that and then when. Wanda and um and Geraldine mentioned it. That's when I was like, oh, it's a stork. Okay, it's neither of those things. It's actually meant to be a stork, which is ironic because you know Wanda's carrying a baby still. Um and then and then Wanda going to extreme lengths to cover up her baby bump, like wearing like you know, switching between. I think I think the the coat switching thing, the coat switching scene with um clip was very very cool. Like her switching between like a, like a like a like a normal jacket and then like a waterproof jacket and then, like a nice fur coat that looked really like the fur coat really suited her. The fur coat really suited her. Um, and in the end, she just threw it all away, and then she just tried to hide it with like a bucket and baskets of fruit and lamps and everything else in between. Um, like that is where the, the the actual kind of comedy aspect of the whole sitcom thing comes in. But then you also realise that you know it, it's to actually protect her identity even further because then her pregnancy in itself is really really weird. It happened over, overnight, and then the very next day, like well, pretty much the same day. Because I think even the, even in the beginning of the episode, even in the beginning of the episode, they, they actually, like she actually said like you know by by Vision's calculations, the baby should be due um, on like Friday afternoon. But then on that same day, like later that evening, later that afternoon, she delivered. So. It's good. it's gonna be like a very very weird thing for the other neighbors to kind of calculate too. The fact that you know, oh, like yesterday we saw Wanda, she was fine, thin as a stick of bread or something, but and just 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 reasonably thin, and then all of a sudden she's got a baby bump, and now she's literally that same day that we see the baby bump, she's giving birth. Like it, that is the kind of thing that would test the patience of um of the other of the other townspeople, and especially Dotty. Dotty was already suspicious. She like she'd heard stories. So I think. It makes you wonder what like like what Dottie's history is because I think Dottie has been kind of hailed as the kind of leader of the town and like she she's had like a fairly prominent role in being the one that you need to impress and the one you need to actually gain approval from. Um, so much so, so much so so much so that that scene of her telling Wanda that she didn't trust her and that she'd heard stories about her and her husband kind of made you think like is she with Sword too? Is she actually from them too? Like 
because we haven't really hit we haven't like seen any sword but like um memorabilia or anything on her like like monica was the one with, was the one with the sword necklace that made her stand out to wonder but with Geraldine, with um dotty she has the name that i find intriguing but besides from that she doesn't really have much else going for her so it's kind of weird in that sense, but I think if 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 Dotty finds out that you know not that not only was Wanda pregnant, but she also gave birth in the space of like a day, then that is also that is also something that she herself would question and would actually you know bring to the table in a discussion and maybe even because I, I I can definitely see e- even in like like a kind of dramatic sitcom style, I can definitely see like Dotty trying to hold like a secret townspeople meeting without Wanda or Vision and discussing all these things. And stuff, and, and and discussing how to confront them, and 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 on what to do with them, and everything. So, so that that then that then makes me curious as to like you know like like Dotty has to be someone from the outside because everyone that that Wanda controls, cause she she controls them in a way that they don't question anything, that they don't raise any suspicions, like they're not suspicious of her or or Vision too much. But with Dotty, she's actually self consciously suspicious, like 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 she 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 she's actually aware of the fact that something is wrong. And she's suspicious of her own accord, and everything. So that changes. So I'm wondering if Dotty actually herself could be from the outside too, and what her connection could be to Sword, or what 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 her connection is to everything that's going on. So yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. But yeah, that is it. That is pretty much all I've got for episode three. Um, very very fun. As the episodes go by, they are very very fun, and I think it's also proof that you know, like with w- 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 with these introductions, with w- w- with these opening to uh, openings to 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 the show, I think it's like furthering my kind of faith and belief that Marvel knows what they're doing with the Disney Plus stuff. They know how to flesh out these characters, and it's making me look all the all, all the more forward to stuff like Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and Loki, and everything else that's going to be coming out so yeah it's it, it's 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 all really fun it's all really fun i think disney plus as a whole as a streaming service is being utilized very very well by all of them and i think i i can definitely see other brands of disney going into this as well like you know with um with fox i mean fox, the other fox rights are in disney's hands now but with, with, with star wars if they, if, they, if they decide to star wars are coming out with new stuff star, star wars actually is coming out with other with other series and like still going strong with the mandalorian coming out with the boba fett series and the bad batch and all that other stuff. So Disney Plus is going very, very well, and Marvel is taking it by the reins and doing their thing. So I look forward to it. I look forward to all they've got to offer. So yeah, that is it. That is pretty much all I've got from this episode of One Division. So as always, thank you guys so much for being here and for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment on what you thought of the episode and what your theories are for next time and what you think of everything that happened and how you felt about it um and any 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 sitcoms you want them to parody before they actually delve more and more in, in, in into the marvel side of things and actually go back to the classic kind of marvel kind of tone and atmosphere that we're all familiar with and stuff and and and, and, and what you'd like to see from them uh and once again the full length reaction is going to be over on patreon so you can go check that out over there and yeah that is it so i will see you guys next time